videos up on YouTube, so it amplifies. And uh, uh, we realize that because we actually cater to part two senior and disabled. Uh, that's why we have a wheelchair handicapped uh, accessible meetings. All our meetings are always uh, uh, accessible. And um, so anyway, the Alliance, uh, there's actually several organizations that are uh, Sponsoring this event is the Alliance for Better District 6, the Alexander Tennis Association, which is this building, um, and the uh, North America Business Association, and the uh, Tennis Association Coalition of San Francisco. And we have a uh, sponsor, uh, Tip Top Market. Anyway, okay, so um, first thing we do is we go around the room and we do introductions. My name is Michael Nolte, and I'm the uh, executive director of uh, Alliance for Better District 6. And so we My name is Marvis Phillips. Phillips. I'm public safety chair, land use chair, parliamentarian, uh, legislative analyst, director of the building, and uh, three decade resident of the neighborhood. I'm also on the Erica Forward for dealing with the street uses and so on, land use. And I'm not involved in anything at this time. Okay, excuse me. No. I'm Reginald Meadows. Thank and you. And I'm also a resident of this building, and I've been on the record for another two years. Okay, and you? I'm Donald Bachman. I'm Donald Bachman. I am not involved in anything at this time other than the Cadillac just down the street. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. I know where we are. I live here and I'm a member of the East Illinois Business Council Association and also the newly formed Tenoy People's Congress. It's good. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kim Estero. I'm also a member of the Urban Board of the Treasurer. Um, I'm trying to stay involved with some of the groups. I work with the Tenoy Voting Group. We're having a very important registration drive. Um, I work with Hospitality House on their organizing group for a um, community flea market. And I'm just starting to work with Alexander and learning more about the planning. Thank you. I'm Alexander Goldman. I'm a community planner with TNDC. Thank you. you sir? Uh, Hector Jacito, I'm the lieutenant at Tender White Station. Thank you. Um, I don't like Serena. I'm with Forest City. Thank you. And Hi, and I'm Buffy Tarbox, and I'm with Forest City. Thank you. Mario Fortune, and I'm with Dish. Thank you. I'm Denise Story, and I live next door. I'm pretty uh, to be producer of six shows in the area of the New York Village. Thank you. Hi, I'm Julie Burnick. I'm the project sponsor for 1066 Market Street with Shorenstein Residential, and also the president of the Tenderloin Community Benefit District Board. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Meg Spriggs, also uh, the project sponsor for 1066 Market. I'm Zachary Malay, I'm District 7 Director for BART. Thank you. I'm Veronica Bellin, I'm consultant for BART. Thank you. I'm Dennis. Dennis Eisen, I'm the Chief Officer for the Alliance. Okay, he moved. <laughs> okay, great. Um, okay. So, uh, next is on the back of the agenda is our uh, ground rule. It basically just says to um, be positive when you ask questions uh, so we can have a, a, a productive meeting. And uh, also, we're going to be having food and door prizes, so we also ask you to read what it says about that on, uh, on the, uh, the ground rule. So, um, can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? Is there a uh, is there a second? I second. All right, thank you. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Um, next is membership committee. Uh, Susan, could you pass around the donation? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, membership committee, uh, normally uh, that's what we kind of had you uh, do is fill out the membership forms. Uh, basic, or we like to know who comes to our meetings uh, because that way we know how good our outreach is and how to improve it. And, uh, 
So we are, what we do is we pass around our donation camp because uh, we are a resident run. This is we're actually the only resident run organization in the Tenderloin. You may have heard of other ones, but they don't exist. Uh, we've been around and existed now for 16 years. Um, we uh, are we address the concerns of uh, the neighborhood, but we're also not only in the Tenderloin. We also have many members also throughout all district six and. Uh, we uh, do have a presence in, in various other parts of the neighborhood, and we run uh, Yahoo groups as well on the internet. We have Yahoo groups as well as uh, for the Tenderloin. We have Next Door, which is uh, uh, dealing with the issues on the internet for residents that move in and want to know how to connect with the neighborhood. Um, so anyway, uh, so the only way our organization makes money, we're not an agency. This through donations and membership dues. That's the only way we make money. Uh, so, uh, and that's how we keep our um, activities going that we uh, do. So, um, so the next item we have is going to be, uh, uh, we're going to talk about Better Bar, and uh, I'm going to turn down the lights so that uh, we can see the presentation. Okay, hey, that's good. Uh, yeah, that's good. So I think there's a number of presentations this evening, and this wall is our projector source. So, so if your people need to move over, some need to move over, and now is your uh, opportunity. Um, yeah, but you're kind of in front of it right now. Thank you. Okay. That's perfect. Um, so my name again is Zachary Malay. I am the District 7 Director for Mars, and I'll discuss those districts momentarily. Um, basically today, um, I'm going to outline this is our Better Bark presentation. I'm going to briefly introduce myself, District 7, and your representatives of San Francisco. Um, I'm going to go into the history of BART and the ridership growth and everything that has led us to where we are now, uh, what we are proactively doing here and now to make BART better, but what still is needed to bring BART to what's called a state of good repair. Um, and then asking for your help and your feedback on how you would be willing to help in getting to that unfunded need to reach a state of good repair. So San Francisco is represented by three districts. We debated who would present here, because um, we're not physically standing in District 7, but I represent much of San Francisco Supervisorial District uh, 6. Areas of District 6, I represent a lot of SOMA, including Rincon, South Beach, Mission Bay, um, and then I represent the rest of the eastern sliver of San Francisco, Bayview, Hunters Point, Silver Terrace, Indian Basin, Dog Catch, plus Treasure Island. Uh, your other two directors are Joe Sepulitz representing District 8, and Tom Radulovich representing District 9. BART, long before BART, long before many of us, there was a system called the Key System that connected the East Bay with San Francisco. The Bay Bridge lower deck was for trains and trucks, the upper deck was for cars, and that Key System connected you to the Trans Bay Terminal that eventually got converted for buses. Um, but with that conversion, we realized there was traffic and rails had a way around that. And that's kind of where the idea of BART came in, was bringing back the key system. Um, it eventually opened in the early 70s, and this is what you had when BART finally opened for service. Um, the number of routes and the extensions we've experienced have grown the system extensively. Originally, you just went from Concord to Daly City and from Richmond to Fremont. Since that time, there were early 1990 extensions out to uh, Colma to Dublin Pleasanton and uh, North Concord and Pittsburgh. In 03, we opened the extension to Millbrae and San Francisco Airport. Last year, we opened a segment to the thank you to the Oakland International Airport. And then, middle of next year, we'll be going into San Jose and the Warm Springs extension, and also in 2017, the Ebart extension out to. Uh, East Contra Costa County, Antioch. So with all this expansion and perhaps driving it as well is ridership growth in the system. 
when BART first opened, we were carrying about 40,000 trips per day. Today, we're carrying about 440,000 trips on an average week day. Uh, and that's grown extensively in just the last five years when we were at 380,000 and we're now at 440,000. We carry about time and a half as many people under the bay as the Bay Bridge carries over the bay. And this shows the peak at different stations. Um, in particular, Montgomery and Embarcadero stations have the highest peak level ridership. That creates a lot of concerns for us that we'll be going into in the next few slides. And then finally, all of these slides are meant to point out the fact that BART's ridership strongly supports the San Francisco economy. Um, what this shows, uh, the red line shows San Francisco jobs, and this on the left is the uh, access for that, while the blue line shows BART ridership. As you can see, ridership grows with the number of jobs in San Francisco. And furthermore, what this gap shows is that as the number of jobs grow, the share of people using transit, namely BART, to get to those jobs increases as well. So both numbers increase and share increase. This economy could not survive without BART is the takeaway. This is what you see on a daily basis if you ride BART. And who in here does make a point of riding BART quite frequently? Okay, anyone make occasional use of BART? Cool, okay. So if you ride, ride it during commute periods, this is what you will experience. Um, we do have a number of things in work. Uh, station brightening, modernization, and elevator escalator improvements, to name a few. Um, we are recuperating from the uh, financial deficits that we experienced in the early 2000s when we cut cleanliness workers. We've been getting them back up and the brightening crew is one part of that. Um, also, we're looking at capacity studies and in fact there was an open house at Embarcadero Station this morning between 7 and 10 to engage with the public on how to improve capacity at that station. Tomorrow morning between 7 and 10 a.m., there'll be an open house at the Montgomery Street Station to discuss this. This is one idea, which is what are called saddlebag platforms, which will allow people to potentially enter the trains on the side platforms, and the middle platforms would be for exiting. Um, I do not represent Balboa Park Station, but to highlight a local improvement that has been made in San Francisco is there was the western side connection that was done in 2011 to improve connectivity to Ocean Avenue. And then on the east side, it's actually out for bid right now, a better connection to the Geneva Avenue side of that station. And then finally at Powell Street Station, which we are nearby, um, this is called a gateway station based on the volume of ridership and type of ridership that it uses that, that serves that station. Um, it was selected at, among a few stations for station modernization. And what we're looking to do there is basically in the inside area on the concourse level, um, creating a, a place for people to wait for trains on that level. It will have shops and retail uh, and improved connectivity to the new central subway system. Um, as well, we're looking to install canopies on the upper level, um, on the street level. The escalators, one of the reasons they're so frequently out of service is because they're subjected to weather conditions. Rain falls onto the escalators and that damages them and wears and tears them more quickly. As well, the escalators are used um, as a sleeping ground for the homeless population. By having these canopies, it will protect from the elements with this roofing, and it will also allow us to close the stations from upstairs rather than at the bottom. So, moving ahead, this graph simply shows you the distribution of BART's assets, worth about $20 billion of assets. The main issue is that right now, about one-third of our assets are in a state of disrepair. They, they're outdated, broken, and need to be replaced.
but if we do nothing in the next 10 years, it will be about 50% of our assets will be in a state of disrepair. And that will impact the reliability of service. Um, we've identified about $4.8 billion um, to address a lot of these issues, but there's still $4.8 billion remaining to reach a state of good repair. We, a brief background of how we got here. So this is not unique to BARTS. Uh, nationwide, the emphasis historically has been on system expansion within transportation, sometimes at the expense of maintenance. Um, these pictures depict that Minnesota bridge collapse that happened a few years ago. Um, in Washington, D.C., the WMATA system experienced an escalator failure, and everyone fell on top of each other while using the escalator. And this is simply a matter of historical prioritizing. We now have prioritization towards state of good repair investments, and we also are interested in that. Um, ridership driven impacts I'll mention momentarily, but what is unique to BART, we don't have the flexibility of having buses, a bus system of our own to use to replace BART when we do system repairs. Just to do that transbay closure that was necessary required a concerted effort of working with our uh, partnering transit agents. So we have three big projects, new rail cars, upgrading our train control system, and our Hayward maintenance complex. These are the top three things that we've identified especially need to be updated. We have the oldest fleet in the country. Um, on average, each of our cars is about 30 years old, but the majority of our cars are original fleet from 1970s. Uh, they have gone through some renovation, but they're nonetheless the original fleet. And we have only seven, we have only 669 cars to go around. We need to expand the cars um, in order to address the capacity issues and also make more available during the peak commute hours. 90% uh, of our fleet is out there during the peak of the commute, which means they get little rest and a lot of wear and tear. Um, 115 miles, 115,000 miles per year each of our rail cars get. This is the schedule for the fleet of the future. Um, we will get 10 pilot cars. It's actually looking like early next year. We'll finalize the design, then it will go into mass production, and we will begin to receive the original fleet uh, for service in 2017. Over five years, we'll get to that 775 goal and we'll have a mixed fleet. We want to first expand in order to address the capacity problems, and then once we get up to our targeted goal, we'll start doing a retirement of the old fleet. Um, this is some of the features of the new fleet. Uh, two -third, no, no US manufacturer bidded for this. Um, Bombardier is the, uh, the, develop, the manufacturer of the fleet. Uh, but two-thirds of the investment in producing the fleet has to be spent to the United States. The new fleet will feature three doors on each side instead of two. That will increase the onboarding and offboarding flow. Um, there'll be this screen that will show you where you are at in the system, and the system map will obviously complement that. There'll be onboard announcements. The air control system will be improved. You sometimes perhaps have been in those really hot train cars because of our HVAC issues on those. Um, this climate control system promises to be a better improvement to that. The train control system at BART uses a block-based system without getting too technical into that. Basically, it limits how frequently our trains can run. We can run about 24 trains per hour per direction through San Francisco. It's about a train every two and a half minutes but that limits what we can provide on the legs because four of our lines converge into the San Francisco line. And when you divide those two and a half minutes across those four lines, you end up with 15 minute frequencies plus some extra service on one of the lines during the week periods. Um, the solution is called communications-based train control. It allows trains to be in constant communication as opposed to the current technology where it's block based and that will allow us two and a two minute frequency instead of two and a half so about 30 trains per hour per direction and the potential of 12 minute frequencies on each of our routes rather than 15. 
Um, leaving this short, basically when you have extra train cars, we're moving from 669 and hoping to get up to over a thousand eventually.